My name is Jose Vargas, and I am on a mission to help you create breakthroughs in your personal and professional life so that you can grow and lead your life with excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jose Vargas Show. I am so excited to be here today with you all. Thank you for joining me. And thank you for where, you know, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Thank you for listening to me. Today, I want to speak to you on how your physical health impacts you as a leader. How your physical health impacts you as a leader. And I am so thrilled that I have a friend, um, and he's actually my doctor, uh, my chiropractor. Um, and he is with me today. He's a very special guest. He is a leader in the healing space. Uh, his name is Dr. Hatam. And I am so excited to have him here today. Welcome, Dr. Hatam. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Glad. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm excited. It's, it's, it's an honor to have you here. And before we get to Dr. Hatam, um, and, and he's going to be sharing with you some, some gold, right? He's going to be sharing with you how your physical health Im- impacts you as a leader. Um, I'm going to share with you how I got introduced to Dr. Hatam and just a little bit of my story. You know, for years, in 2001, I got in a terrible car accident. And I was ejected from the car and I flew, I don't know how many feet, but um, I, after that accident that nearly cost me my life and the life of my sister and a few other friends, um, I started struggling with severe migraines. And I, I can't pinpoint to the fact that it was from that accident, but from that moment, I started getting severe migraines, and for years I struggled. For years, I, you know, it was debilitating migraines. For years, they were just, uh, you know, just it interfered with interfered with work, interfered uh, with the things that I was doing. Um, just kind of got in the way and really paralyzes you. If anybody out there struggling with migraines, you know, you know the effects of a severe migraine and what that can have on your productivity and your impact uh, in your life. So for years, I was looking for a cure. You know, for years, I was looking for a solution to my problem. You know, I tried all the diets that you possibly can imagine, Whole30, you know, keto, fasting. <laughs> I tried everything, and nothing seemed to work. I, I, I kept diaries. I removed things from my, my uh, you know, from my diet, um, and nothing seemed to work. And it made me a little upset because I'm like, man, I'm removing all these things from my life and it's still, um, I'm still having these problems. You know, emergency visits, thousands of dollars in expenses that I paid out to try to get this resolved um, and still nothing. And a couple years back, you know, I moved to the DMV area, to the Washington, D.C. area, and I was researching because, I, again, I was just so uh, focused on trying to get a solution to this problem. And I found Dr. Hatam. And, uh, you know, I remember meeting him. And I remember meeting you, Dr. Hatam. And, uh, you know, I remember the first time we went into the office with my wife. And you, I shared with you that I went to one of the top neurologists in the country, right, at, at John Hopkins. And all they wanted to do was med- medicate me, right? And, and I'm not against medicine, but... I didn't want to take medicine. I wanted to find out what was the root cause of that problem for me. And I remember what you said after I mentioned to you the medicine that they were trying to prescribe to me. And I researched it. So you were you were on point. You were stating facts. And, you know, that because you were so transparent and so open and honest to, to help, tr- wanting it to help me find the cure, um, you build that trust level with me. And, and you did. You've been... Literally a, a miracle worker. I know I tell you tell you that all the time, but um, it's really helped me tremendously. I'm probably 95% better um, over the last few years that I've been been visiting you. Um, so I wanted to thank you personally, and I also wanted to share that story because I think a lot of times in a leader's life, you know, we're we're so busy, especially nowadays, um, that we don't realize the the impact or the effect that a medical condition or maybe stress or maybe the busyness of life, how that can have an impact on us as leaders, especially when it pertains to our health. So I just want you to introduce yourself very quickly and and tell us who you are and um, how did you grow up and what led you to become a chiropractor? Well, thank you. Well, um, thank you again for having me on this show. I um, Funny you say that. My original background was in information technology engineering 
when mm. I was going to George Mason University back in 2001. Um, when I graduated high school, I actually finished my Microsoft certifications. I was a Microsoft certified professional. I, I worked with servers. I worked with internet. Wi we didn't, there wasn't much Wi-Fi back then, but there was T1 <laughs> lines and all that. So, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, I grew up more doing IT stuff. I loved it. But gradually, you know, my freshman year in college, I, um, I just didn't, you know, I realized that that kind of a career would lead to no people skills because most mm. IT people are either behind a help desk or don't talk to anybody. And, you know, my first internship in senior high school in, in a pretty big IT company, I realized that this was kind of kind of true. So, you know, my mom's also a chiropractor. I believe she's treated you a mm. couple of times here at this office, too. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yes. I Dr. didn't realize Sarah, that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So she was the one who said, well, this is a family business. Why not keep it in the family? So. I made a drastic career change. I um, I changed majors at George Mason from engineering to biology. And when mm. I graduated from there, I then attended. I went straight from gra August 2004, I graduated from Mason. And then October 2004, I went to chiropractic school in Florida. So wow. it was a really quick tr transparency. So four years later, you know, here we are. And um, <laughs> wow. And, um, you know, now I get to treat, you know, my first year probably treating people is kind of tough only because you're fresh out of school. Right, right. But at the same time, I enjoyed the people interaction. I got yeah. to, you get to see different people every single day. Mm. And it's just wonderful because I like to talk to people and I like to, um, you know, I've, I've, I've even, you know, recently, past couple of years, I've been on, you know, I've done, a, I've done a health talk on ABC, also CBS. Oh, wow. Yeah, the videos are on our website, so you can nice. go check them out. Sometime. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. No, and that, that's a powerful um, transition, you know, for that, that you were able to pivot and you, you, you were on your way to doing one thing and then you realized, hey, I'm, I need to pivot. This is something that I would enjoy more. You know, you listen to your mom, and yes. I didn't realize that was your mom. Yeah, yeah. You know, another thing, I might, another thing I might add. Um, Excuse me. Ever since two thousand seven, you know, these smartphones have come out, and I've noticed the prevalence of technology. It goes back to my research in technology that people keep staring at their phones, and the implications of that are: if you've ever watched Doctor Oz, he coined the term "text neck." Oh yes. And Doctor Sanjay Gupta, world-renowned neurosurgeon, has said that too much text neck will not just cause neck pain. But it could also affect your ability to breathe. Mm. So you know, before before you know, before two thousand seven, you know, most cell phones had two purposes: you could make a phone call, or occasionally you could send a text message. But that was cumbersome. But now you can order a pizza, order a car. Shoot, you can do anything you want. There's no reason to call anybody <laughs> anymore. You know, right, right. it got away. So you know, I had a couple of professors from two different schools who reached out to me and made me come out there and do a guest lecture on um, at their schools to their IT students on the impact that it's having on their neck mm. pain and how if you're going to be texting all day you first of all you shouldn't be but if you have to do that you know you should always do it at eye level not below eye level because if you do it below eye level it's going to cause that curvature the lordosis in your neck to mm. get messed up and um and when that happens then a migraine is quite possible right right as you know well, better <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. no definitely and you know and you definitely helped me pinpoint you know the problem uh and where the problem was coming from and that was to me that was a breakthrough you know, and, and I know this podcast is a lot about, you know, helping leaders create those breakthroughs. And for me, that was a huge breakthrough because you identified the source of where that problem was coming from. So now, so now, if, you know, like I said earlier, leaders are busy now more than ever. You know, they're on their smartphones. Oh, yes. Getting that. Uh, yes. What is it? Techneck? Techneck, Techneck, whatever they call it. <laughs> yeah. So what how can a busy leader listening to me, you know, listening to us right now, you know, a, a busy father, a busy mother who, who are trying to get things done, trying to accomplish a business owner, um, an entrepreneur, sure. how can they and why should they prioritize their health now more than ever um, as a leader? Sure. Well, you know, let's let's discuss migraines and headaches for a reason um, and, and then it'll tie back down. You know, headaches usually have a cause. Most of the time, the causes are musculoskeletal, like yours were, but there are occasional times when it could be something a little more serious. And I'm going to give you a story um, about a patient I saw last um, last February who came in, and I will. And um, I'm not going to name names due to privacy, although she did give me permission to say the story. But um, I well, I saw her and I said, "Wait a minute! I know you. You're on TV. You're you're famous." And and uh, she was telling me that she's been having headaches and migraines, and it's causing her. To like vomit and, and throw up and I Oof. said and I and you know she was brushing it off as migraines and I said well, it's quite possible a migraine but the thing it could be something a little more serious have you seen a medical doctor no just didn't acupuncture didn't work 
someone said try a chiropractor I said okay well um, I said you know what we're gonna do before I do anything for you uh, I'll do some basic treatment today but uh, but before we continue any treatment you're gonna have to go get a brain MRI like ASAP so mm. I, I, I sign her up you know I, I register her with a with a MRI facility nearby and um, a week later she gets scheduled and um, I get a phone call from the radiologist. And you know when the radiologist, maybe three times in 10, 11 years I've been doing this, a radiologist called me. And you know when the radiologist called you, it's not a good thing. Wow. Radiologist called me and said, your patient has a brain tumor the size of an orange in her head. Ooh. And is it okay if I send her to the emergency room? And I said, of course it is. Please send her to the emergency room. So 13 <laughs> days later, she gets surgery and she's good. They had to remove it or else she'd be, you know. <laughs> oh my yeah, goodness. it was one of those things. But, uh, but uh, the point of my story here is that don't, even if you're a leader, even if you are busy, even if you have 100 kids to take care, take care of, 100 employees to take care of, do not ignore the symptoms. Mm. Because, yeah, okay, it could be a musculoskeletal thing, a couple of Advil might help, but it, it could also be something a lot, a lot more dangerous. And this was a perfect example mm. of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, you know, good, you know, good diagnosis, you know, good treatment comes from good diagnosis. You can't treat every headache the same. And Man, that's good. Yeah, that's absolutely. Good. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. You always have to rule out the more serious stuff before you proceed with any treatment, especially if they haven't had that ruled out. Mm. But my advice to, like I said, my advice to the busy professionals out there is don't take your health for granted. Yeah. You only have one spine. You only have one brain. Right. You only have one body. And right. if you mess it up, that's it. You know, you, right. th that is, you know, it's, if you catch something very serious early enough, it, you can get it treated. But if you wait till the last minute, it could, you know, you might have lost that opportunity mm. to get that treated, especially for the serious wow. diseases. So my wow. advice to you busy people out there, take your health seriously. Don't take it for granted. <laughs> wow. No, I love that. And don't lose the opportunity, you know. Yes. And I love that because one of the things that I'm teaching in the, it's called the lead through method. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the steps in the lead through method for people to get, for leaders to get their breakthroughs is what you mentioned. You know, it's really, the first step is called locate it. I call it locate it. And it's really to find out where you are, right? And one of the things that you do very well with your story, and personally for me, you helped me find out where I was. But more importantly, the second step, and you dissected it. You know, you, 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 you figured out where was that coming from? You know, why was why were you having those symptoms? Why were you having and like you said, you don't treat everything the same. No. And so sometimes as leaders, I think we try to, uh, you know, diagnose ourselves or, or put, push things to the side. And exactly. Because, you, you know, you, there's different treatments for every different uh, condition. You know, if you treat every headache the same, um, yeah, possibly it could help, but there are those occasions where it will not help and mm -hmm. it could have the dire consequences. So don't ignore symptoms. Find out what the body, bo you know, pain is your body's last resort of saying, hey, buddy, something's wrong, help me. Mm. Say that again. Pain is your body's last resort of, oh, that's your, good. Uh, of saying that, hey, buddy, something's wrong, do something about it. Wow. Don't just wait, you know, because the World Health Organization doesn't define pain as lack of symptoms. People think that I could sit here with stage three pancreatic cancer right now and say, I don't have any pain, so I guess I'm, I'm healthy, mm. when you really think about it. But the World Health Organization defines health as, you know, the, the, this, you know, the, um, the mixture of physical, emotional, and psychological balance. Mm. And that's what real health means. So wow. if you think you just don't have pain and you're healthy, well, it's possible you could be, but it's definitely not lack of symptoms, I'll tell you that. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> So, Dr. Hatam, that's yes. great stuff, man. Uh, so what is one of the biggest problems that you are having to treat in your office these days? You know, um, we see, a, you know, I would say maybe 20, 25 percent of the patients I see are injury. So mm. they can they're in a pretty bad car wreck like you were in 2001. Wow. But I don't limit my practice to that because I didn't get into healthcare just to treat injuries or or people who get hurt. Although, you know, I'll be happy to help them. Mm -hmm. The majority of people I like to treat are the ones who have pain from unknown sources. So I always like to do detective work and figure mm -hmm. out what it is. That's awesome. So, you know, one thing we love to do here is, as you see, fix curves. Mm -hmm. Because if you just go to a straight chiropractor and they, you know, and you have headaches and migraines and the headaches are not from anything dangerous, but it's idiopathic, meaning they don't know. And let's say that you have an x-ray and it shows your curve of your neck is horrible. 
getting your back, getting your neck adjusted is not going to do anything for that. Mm. That's like putting Listerine on crooked teeth. It'll feel better, but then the next day go back. They're, That's good. The teeth are still crooked right there. Right. So, <laughs> but, but we, as you know, as you see, we like to actually add rehabilitation, exercise, yes. traction yes. to actually fix the curve at its problem. So we adopt a method called CBP, chiropractic biophysics, which was designed by Dr. Deed Harrison, um, who is in Idaho, but he's the one who has all these seminars, and that's what we like to base our practice on. So when I actually re-X-ray your neck, like I've done with you, right. you actually see a difference, you know? I did, yeah, yeah so absolutely. There's, there's a reason why your headaches are 95% gone. I mean, hopefully they'll be 100% gone one yes, day. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, I'll take 5% over <laughs> all all versus your <laughs> migraines that you've been hospitalized for in the past. Right, right, no. So that's, you know, the biggest challenges, I guess you could say, are, you know, um, the helping people with a structural structural differences but that's i don't consider that a big challenge i consider that you know an opportunity to help people yeah whether they yeah. listen to me or not that's another thing right you have people who come in and they you know they've done three or four treatments of it and then they stop because they've again back to oh my my migraines are gone so i'm cured so then they come back two months later saying so came back with a vengeance so right you know you have to i guess you have to ha help people understand the reasoning of what's going on yes if it's a simple tension headache if it's a if it's a migraine or if it's something more serious, you just have to get your message across and make sure they listen. Mm -hmm. Whether it's to treat with me or they have to see, see a, a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, it's, you always have to make sure you inform the patient of what's going on. Mm, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So what are three practical daily disciplines that you can give to the leader listening uh, to this show right now to improve his health or her health um, or, or the overall well-being? Um, of well, their lives. Number one, don't, you know, f first and foremost, connect with your staff, connect with your employees, because they're the ones who are going to be with you and on your side. If there's a disconnect between you and your staff, the system will not really work as well. It's not, it's like a car that certain parts are not running, but the car will still run, but it'll run sluggishly. Mm -hmm. But if you have that well-oiled machine, absolutely, then that car is going to be a Ferrari and go down, absolutely, and go down the freeway at 100 miles an hour. I love that. If you not get pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, connect with your clientele. Whether you're mm -hmm. a lawyer, a doctor, whether you are a teacher, or whatever vocation you are in. There's, in my opinion, there's no vocation good, big or small, whatever. Whether you, you absolutely. know, I've been learned to, I was raised to say that, you respect someone, whether they're the CEO or the janitor. Absolutely. So that's how that's how the approach should be. Yeah. So, you know, you have to connect with your clientele, with the people you meet, because there's a, there used to be a saying the customer is always right. In certain aspects, I agree with that. But at certain, but sometimes, once in a blue moon, if if a you know if a client of yours, whoever is listening, is really nasty to your staff, you right. always have to protect your staff. Absolutely. Especially if you know the. St the customer is in the wrong. So Absolutely. That, so that old saying is not always true. Right. I, maybe 98% of the time. But there are occasions where if someone's going to be nasty to my staff, I'm just going to tell them to leave. Yeah, Because absolutely. we will not tolerate being rude. Now if, pay, now, if the staff is rude to the patient, then they're out of here. That's not a problem. Right, right. But, it, but if the customer <laughs> is rude to the staff for no reason, then they're out of here. I mean, you Love have that. So, number two, the customer is not always right, but, oh, but always protect your staff. Yeah. Yeah. And number three, you always have to have, you know, always, you know, it's always when you're interacting with, with, with whether staff, clients, anyone, you always have to, you know, shh, be optimistic, be happy. No one likes going to a store, to a restaurant where people, there's no greeting, there's no hello. Right. And that's not, you know, uh, you know, if, or if I, you know, I, um, if I go somewhere and like the, cashiers playing on their phone no one likes that no right. one, that is not really <laughs> the type of customer service I, you know i believe you told us you you told us a story in the past about how you went to a restaurant there was a bee in your food yeah and guess what you didn't go back <laughs> right absolutely you because know you know what's going to happen is uh, to anyone listening if if you have a bad interaction with yelp and google reviews on the warpath people are going to go post that stuff absolutely and one bad review can really hurt your business and you, you could think you can hide behind your lawyer and blah, blah, blah. But remember, the truth will set you free. So yeah. if you want to if you want to go that route as well, it's even, it's a, that's just even going to get worse. So yeah. avoid yeah. bad reviews by having the best customer service while protecting your staff. Mm -hmm. So now just in terms of like physical health, right, or even ment mental health, but physical health, what is one thing that like one practical 
thing that someone listening can do on a daily basis just to improve their overall physical health? Let's say somebody's struggling with back pain or shoulder pain, and it's really interfering with their productivity. Um, I, I love what you said about taking care of your connecting with your employees yes. or team members or even family members, right? Yes. Because that has an overall effect on your health as well, um, more than what people uh, tend to uh, believe. You know, how you relate well to others is so important because emotionally it impacts you, mentally it impacts you, and physically it impacts you, right? So, but how, what, what's one practical uh, advice would you give to someone listening that they can apply for their overall physical well-being? Some, maybe a daily practice, is this, you know, stretching or... Sure. Or... Well, first and foremost, if you're having back pain or you're having shoulder pain for a while, go get it checked out. That's number one. Go get it checked out. Um, you know, if you if you don't know where the heck that pain is coming from, because many people who I've seen who have had lower back pain, especially because the number one reason people go to doctors in the United States is headaches. Number two mm. is lower back pain. It's not the flu. It's not the cold. It's wow. actually those two things. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So, so huh. if you're having lower, you know, you know, do, had, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sure. but do you think that is because of the stress levels, or what do you what do you think is the cause of those things? I think the headache are probably more due to tension headaches stress mm. levels the lower back pain i think it's because of people working too much and i think it's more of a physical ailment because a lot of a lot of times i see patients who have lower back pain you know they've come in they've seen their primary care the primary care just gives them muscle relaxers which is <laughs> yeah. which is good i mean there's not, I have nothing against that because if you're in debilitating pain that's a really a lifesaver of course but they don't really get a diagnosis they right. just get called lumbago which means low back pain but there's no x-ray there's no mri so i've had many patients who've seen their you know who, who have who have gone to other MDs or chiropractors even no X-ray no MRI and the first thing I do is want to X-ray their back. Even mm. I had like a 24 year old a few years ago who had foot drop, meaning that it was something more neurological. And when I took the X-ray, it showed like no discs. You know, people, people she suffered from big disc issues. And guess why this occurred? Because she was doing deadlifts without wearing a belt. You wow. Know? Okay. So we sent her for an MRI and it showed an extrusion. Now extrusions are the worst type of disc issues because it's basically a herniated disc that's leaking the Oof. nucleus pulposus, which is the, the goo in the middle, out into the spinal cord. So we had to send her out for surgery because, but wow. she was better after the, after the procedure. So ergonomics, when it comes to lower back pain, if you want to prevent lower back pain, if you sit all day, get a standing workstation. That's number one. Mm, I have one. Of course, number one is to get it checked out, get a diagnosis. Don't just tell, if someone just tells you it's or get another opinion. Get some kind of imaging done because lower back pain, you know, lower back pain can be musculoskeletal, can be a hernia disc, but it could also be an aortic aneurysm. It could be a, 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 a cancer growing in the, your lower back. You have to get it checked out. Mm -hmm. um, you have to, and you could only get it checked out through imaging. If someone just touches your back and says, oh, it's a misalignment, that's BS, you know, you mm -hmm. have to, yeah, you yeah. actually have to get some sort of imaging to okay. see what the heck is going on. Because if the pain is radiating down to your leg, that's more than likely a disc issue. Mm. But, you know, there's also other serious issues that can happen. Like there's one called cauda equina syndrome, where if you lose your function of your bladder <laughs> while with lower back pain, that's a medical emergency that can kill somebody. Ooh, well, okay. you know, so I don't want to spew out more of these terms, but at the same time... <laughs> I feel just time, smarter just sitting here with you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you have to always get a good treatment comes from a good diagnosis okay that's my wow. that's, that's always my great treatment philosophy. comes, comes from, from good great diagnosis, diagnosis. regardless wow. and you know some people might and i know some people it make fun of chiros they call them quacks blah 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 but i've also i also know many mds who who tell people to put coconut oil on their wounds or some crap like that i could also call that quackery as well so yeah. <laughs> it, i always say it's not the practitioner it's it's not the it's not the profession as the practitioner. Mm. If you have a competent practitioner, who will who will do the right who who will actually get you the right diagnosis, then you have a good practitioner there. Man, that's if, good. But if you have someone kind of incompetent who tells, regardless if they have DCMD, DDS, whatever behind them, and they they tell you to just go pray more, and I, I believe me, there is a few of them in this area who who do that, then you get what you pay for, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. Wow. Yeah. So to, to wrap it up here, um, that was great stuff. Thank I want to ask you one question. It's, 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 uh, kind of like a fun question, sure. but what is one thing that you do personally or financially or emotionally mm -hmm. when you find yourself stuck to get unstuck and get back on track? One thing that you do? Well, you have to brainstorm, say, mm. okay, well, 
what can I do now to help the business? What can I do now to to reach out to more people, to help more people? And you brainstorm, you get your staff to brainstorm with you, you come up with uh, some ideas together. Hmm. And you know, we have three other locations, so I would say quarterly we have meetings here. Okay. My sister is actually the one who handles all the meetings and she's very brilliant by the way. She's actually she's also a lawyer too. <laughs> 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 she you know, so you know, she 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 occasionally comes in and helps us and um she's That's very awesome. good at team planning and team meetings. So I, I usually allocate that to her. So I guess my point is you if you don't have the time to do it yourself, you you allocate that task to somebody else who you mm. can trust. Okay. Whether it's your office manager, your family member, your best staff, or you do it yourself. But right. if you don't but if you cannot, if you're just overwhelmed and you can't do it, just like a CEO has a CFO, a COO, they dis, they de, delineate the tasks. Yes. Who, um, then that's what you have to do. You, if you can't do it yourself, have someone else help you. That's mm. it. it that's so I guess advice. my point is, don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm. And that's often a. a, a one of the faults of a leader, right? They don't want to ask for help. They exactly. think that asking for help is weak. Or yeah, yeah. a leader, you know, you don't have to know all the answers, but yeah. you but you should be surrounded by people who can, who knows some of the answers, or yeah. you can find the answers, yeah. basically. So this last one, where can people find you? We are in, um, well, our website is Virginia Family Chiropractic. We are in Falls Church, Alexandria, Manassas, and um, Woodbridge. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this of time. Course. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. It takes time and it takes work, but together we can become a leader worth following. You don't have to remain stuck. You don't have to put up a front, but you can take actionable, practical steps to get breakthroughs and not just accept your life, but lead your life towards excellence and towards impact. Because isn't that what we want? We want to have impact in this world and we wanna impact the people in our lives. Listen, if you enjoyed this episode or if you're enjoying this podcast, will you do me a favor? Will you hit the subscribe button and will you share this podcast with one other person, whether that's in your team or in your life? And that would really help us spread the word and that is how this podcast grows. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.